What's up everybody, it's Jay here, and there is no such thing as a safe binder. Now, I am going to explain what I said. I'm just starting it off by stating that as a fact that I thoroughly believe to be true. And I think that everybody should be aware of this. So, in case you didn't know about this, um, people have started to use the term safer sex instead of safe sex. Because obviously no sex is 100% safe. The only way to 100% protect yourself from stuff like pregnancy and STDs and STIs is by not having sex. And even at that, you can still get them anyway. Because it doesn't necessarily have to be a sexual act. There are certain STIs and STDs that are transmitted in other ways or other than sexual acts. And therefore, no sexual act is free of risk. Ergo, people have started saying safer sex because even if you use a condom, you still have a risk of a condom breaking, which would lead to a risk of an STD, a STI, a pregnancy, etc. etc. So, like, basically, general gist of it is none of these things are 100% safe, but this is how to do these things more safely. And that's still important. It's still important to do things the safer way than to do it the riskier way. It's just saying that you're never 100% safe from the possible consequences, and that's an important distinction to make. How that relates to binding is kind of the same. Binding is an inherently dangerous activity. You're doing something that your body isn't used to you doing, doesn't want you to be doing, it goes, goes against what your body had planned for you in the first place. And so it is a bit of a dangerous activity, more than a bit, it's inherently dangerous. Binding isn't a safe thing to do, but people are going to do it. So we have safety tips, but it's important to note that there's no such thing as a safe binder or safe binding. It's all about being safer. I can still injure myself wearing this GC2B binder, binding by all of the rules of binding. I still injured myself when I had an underworks binder, abiding by all of the rules of binding. It's still possible to do that. That's not your fault. That's not the binder's fault. Obviously, you should make an effort to get the safest binder that you can get, but the thing is that different binders work for different people, and different people have different bodies that will take differently to binding, that will cope differently with binding. Some people have a higher tolerance for binding than others. And not all injuries are going to be immediately evident. Like, just because you don't have a broken rib and a punctured lung doesn't mean that you aren't causing some kind of damage to your body and when you are binding you need to be very aware of the fact that you're doing something that is inherently dangerous and that you need to take care of yourself you need to try and be as safe as you can be and be aware that what you are doing is still not going to be 100 percent safe no matter how safe you make an effort to be binding is an inherently dangerous activity there is no 100 percent safe way to bind the only 100 percent safe way to have a flat chest is to have top surgery but top surgery itself isn't 100% safe. So in essence, there is no safe option. It's just safer options. And that's an important distinction. I'm gonna put a link in the description down below to all of the binding information that's available on the Trans Teen Survival Guide. A lot of it was either written by me or put together by me and other people on the blog. I've definitely been very much involved with it and I do know a lot about binding. So if you do have any questions, particularly about binding safely, comment box is open. Thank you for watching this video. The like button is down there in the corner. The subscribe button is over there. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Bye.